The environment didn't get up in the recent federal election. And not only did the environment not get up, neither did vision. A vision for a sustainable and habitable future. We heard a lot about mandates. We heard a lot of mantras. Build the cars, stop the boats, axe the tax, cut the tape. They weren't talking about uranium or coal export boats. Build the cars, stop the boats, axe the tax, cut the tape. There are hard times ahead. Hard times defending our hard-won gains and the bright, bright future that we hope for our kin and kindred spirits. We can already see the challenges. The rush is on to fast-track developments and to throw long-held environmental protections overboard. The risks are real, and now we're also starting to see the solutions. Collaboration, crowdfunding, community collective action for our common future. We are champions of a decent, inclusive and equitable future for our country. There are dark days ahead for our climate work, with plenty of support for old King Cole and plenty of denial about the reality of climate change. There's increasing talk of nuclear power, despite the continued refusal to accept or address the fact that Australian uranium fueled the Fukushima meltdown. Some are undermining the role and the ability of renewable energy, demonising the impacts of wind and solar power and belittling other forms of renewable energy. The love affair with coal and uranium continues in the Australian resources sector. It's like a crazy John's ad with the mantra of cut tape, cut tape, cut tape, red, black, green, all tape must go. Even the old Stevie Wonder one in the glove box. It's important for us to defend what we value and what we love. For a while, we had the same Senate that supported the world's largest marine reserves, a price on pollution, and the Clean Energy Finance Corporation. That provides us with important time to consider, to think, to plan, and to organise. And we have a mandate. Our supporters do not turn up to tick a box to avoid a fine. They give us their money and their trust. And they provide us with a mandate that we have an ability and a responsibility to use. We have got skilled people and people skills. We have got competent and committed campaigners, innovative and inclusive organisers. We have got supporters around the country in all nooks and crannies coming out of the woodwork. It's important to understand that we've been here before. ACF has been doing this sort of work for around 50 years. Over that time we've had some good times, we've had some hard times. We've had some beautiful victories and some very profound losses. But we have continued, we've persevered. Our recognition and our respect, our credibility amongst a wide section of the community from conservationists to conservatives will serve us well at this time. We need to reach out to all sorts of people and with the right tools and the right tone we can do this. We need to be committed and we need to be creative. We'll work in the tent and outside the tent. What's most important is our intent. Our focus, our efforts, our hope. Hope, humour, hard work. These things are going to be pivotal in the coming days and our hard work will hopefully evolve and grow into an increased political discourse, a real contest of ideas. It's been said that the most common way that people give up their power is by thinking that they don't have any. But we do. We have real power. It's not coal-fired or reactor-based. It's community power. And community power is baseload power because it is always there. The stakes are high and we're in the game. Activism is our planetary rent and our rent has just increased. We do not have the time or the luxury for despair. Aaron Duddy Roy says that another world is not only possible, she is on a way. And on a quiet day, I can hear her breathing. Our challenge now is to keep her breath and our breath steady, strong and sustained.